Hey everybody, Tony Conosmati from GreatVocalMajority.com, website, YouTube channel. Uh, today, big thing in the news is Jill Stein raised enough money to conduct recounts in three normally Democrat stronghold states, which I think is kind of hilarious. Let's try to step through this. You know, Jill Stein saying she, <laughs> this is very funny, she, Jill Stein saying she wants to ensure voter integrity. What was Jill Stein's stand on voter ID? Did anybody ask her that? Maybe the media should ask her that. That would be a good question, don't you think? Because voter ID would have ensured voter integrity. You know, and uh, what a lot of people probably don't know, is, you know, especially a lot of people who are, were against voter ID, is that if you went and looked on the website of every single uh, former Confederate state and looked at how you would acquire a a voter ID card if you didn't have a, a you know an ID that they recognize like a driver's license or whatever uh, you could still vote you would file a provisional ballot they would give you a form and information on where to get your voter ID you'd have 10 business days this was pretty much in every state you'd have 10 business days to go get that for free and once you came back with the card they would take your ballot and it would be tabulated in the election result. So everybody could get it, but the Democrats were all against that. You see, because the Democrats have a racket. The Democrats have a real racket going, and if you don't really know what the racket is or how it works, you, you just have to look up a guy named Ike Brown in Noxabee County, Mississippi. And Ike Brown, what he would do, uh, He's, there's a long story behind him, but I won't get into all of it. I'll just get into how he did things. What he would do, he knows that, you know, at any given election, only maybe 50 to 65 percent at the most of uh, voters ever vote. So what he would do is he would go to the other 35 percent of registered voters and he would create provisional ballots for them. And knowing that they, that they don't vote because they're either probably old or infirmed or they just don't vote. A lot of people like that. And, uh, and he would just fill them out himself. He would just fill out, <laughs> he'd sit in his kitchen, he'd pile them up, and he would just fill them out one after another, one after another, sign the person's name to them. And then when it was time for, you know, votes, it's like, oh, look, we, look at what we have here. We have all these provisional ballots that haven't been counted. And that's what Ike Brown did until he was caught in uh, Knoxby County, Mississippi. Now, that, that and variations on that theme happen all throughout democrat controlled areas throughout this country it happens in philadelphia it happens in cleveland ohio it happens in new york city it happens everywhere everywhere where there are democrats have you ever noticed that whenever there's a really big controversy about the result of an election it's never in a republican state when was the last time you heard like major major recount of an election in Utah, I mean, you know, you know, or Oklahoma, you know, two of the most Republican states in the country. You never hear of it, but you hear you heard of it when Al Franken uh, ran for Senate and he won by, uh, you know, the felon vote. Remember that? And there was another one where there was a governor in uh, in in Washington State that won. You know, after they counted and recounted because the way it works when it when it's a recount and this is what they tried to do in 2000 with Al Gore and George Bush but it didn't work because basically Supreme Court put the kibosh on it the, the way the Democrats work things is that they just keep counting the votes until the Democrats ahead and then they go okay we're done and that's the way it works so I want to talk a little bit about voter integrity voting integrity like Jill Stein is big on this, oh, we have to make sure that the, there's integrity in the vote because every vote should be counted and all that. And who doesn't agree with that in principle, right? But, you know, she was against voter ID, you know. But Democrats are against voter ID, and why? Why are they against it? Well, one of the, they, you know, of course they always say racism. Everything is, you know, you know, oh, look, my Cheerios, racism, you know. The, the, everything is racism with the, with the Democrats. But... When you look past what their actual substantive argument is, they, they actually will say, well, there's no evidence of fraud. Well, how would you know? There's no control in place that would even flag it.
So how would you even know there's fraud? I mean, here's a, here's a principle that you need to go by. Like in business, when you, have a, when, when you have a business, you have an accounts receivable, accounts payable, and those processes of receiving cash and sending out checks and stuff like that goes by a specific process to avoid embezzlement and fraud. And it, it's not 100% foolproof, but there are controls in place that make it very hard for people to carry out a fraud. And auditors come in every year and they look at the processes and they say, okay, the yea, verily, this looks reasonable. Of course, there could still be problems in there, but they don't say it's perfect. They say it's reasonable. And, and that's the result of having business controls that are generally accepted for those processes. Well, why can't they do the same thing with elections? Why can't they do the same thing with voting? That's all voter ID is about. And the reason is, is because if you have voter ID, Democrats can't cheat the way they have cheated for decades. They can't do it. It's hard. It's too hard because now they have to have a person with a card and a face that matches what's on the card and, and, and the voter roll. And that means dead people can't vote. That means the provisional ballots will be harder to get because the person has to show up with a card that says, this is me, give me my provisional ballot. That's, that's how it's going to have to work. And they can't cheat the way they did. That's why they're against it. And that's why Jill Stein is I'm basically fundraising, doing what she's doing. She's not going to overturn the election. Everybody's thinking like, you know, some of these, some of these people I know, they're saying, oh, is she going to actually overturn the election? Is Hillary going to? No, no. Jill Stein is out for herself. She's a real idiot. She really is. She's a, she's a kook. But I wanted to talk a little bit about it because I think it's actually kind of hilarious that we have Democrats now that are concerned about voting integrity. Where were they? You know, and, and, and what's the premise of, the, of, the, of what Jill Stein is saying? Jill Stein is saying, well, there are some college professors that have, or computer analysts that have said that the electronic ballots voted more heavily for Trump than the paper ballots. <laughs> well, that doesn't mean that the Trump result was wrong or fixed or hacked. It, it could just as easily mean that the Democrats were stuffing the paper ballots with phony ballots. That's what that could mean. In other words, Trump could have won by more than, than what he won by in those states. Plus, those are Democrat states. Who would be doing the cheating? <laughs> You know, like they're, they're democratically controlled states. So I just wanted to talk about this because I just find it kind of hilarious. And um, that's basically it. So anybody out there who's like worried about whether or not this election is going to be overturned, forget it. We're stuck with Trump. We are stuck with him. We have to see how he does. Let's hope he does good. Let's hope he doesn't like, you know, screw anything up, you know, but that's it. Don't worry. No election is going to be overturned. Take care, guys.